welcome to another edition of Issues with GDA. Here we talk about actions and inactions of those who shape our national landscape and how all, their acti uh, all, all these affect, our positive or affect Nigerians positively or otherwise. I'm Ibrahim Sheeta. Today on the show, Ohan is a kick against IPOP's 30 day city tome threats. We'll be examining all sides of this issue. Also, PDP demands CB and Governor's resignation over Naira crash. And later in the show, Erofai Akiri Dolu exchange words over anti-open grazing law. So in the course of the program, we'll take your questions. But first, subscribe to our YouTube channel and drop your questions in the comments section. Let me quickly bring you this special announcement for the 61st Independence Day special edition on issues with GDA. You get a chance to ask the maestro himself, Bamajide Koladi Tutoju, any question of your choice and it will feature virtually during the live show. How to do this? Record a 30 seconds video of yourself with a question you would uh, like to ask Babajide Otutoju. Then send the question via WhatsApp to 0706-382-2184. You never know, your question might be the one to be picked by him. So let's get straight into the program. I have joining me via Zoom, the master himself, Babajide Kolade Otutoju, thank you so much for coming on your show. Thank you, Ibrahim Sita. Absolutely, it's good to have you after the lovely time we had yesterday in our organization. TVC is always there to make everyone happy, both the audience internally and externally. And you fed well. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so let's begin our conversation straight on by looking at the threats by IPOB. They said if the federal government refuses to bring Enam Bekano to court for his next court appearance on October the 21st, the entire Biafra land will be on total lockdown for one month. So this is a stand Ohanese has kicked against. How do you also react to this, Bikeo? I... I totally side with Ohaneze on this matter. Uh, there is a need for IPOP to calm down. There is a need for IPOP to show greater understanding. There is a need for IPOP to behave responsibly. I agree with Ohaneze that Nam the Canon would not want to do anything that will inflict tremendous pain and anguish on Undigo. If you lock down the Southeast for a month, the pain cannot be described. The pain that that will inflict on the people cannot be de described. If you even do it for a day, the pain will be tremendous. Not to talk of a whole month. So, and what Ohaneze is saying is, look, even when IPOP decided to sus suspend its Monday sit at home uh, policy, Woodlums still didn't stop attacking people, maiming innocent people, and destroying properties owned by Undigo. So you can, you can imagine if that directive were then to be given. The directive to enforce Monday sit at home uh, uh, direct, I mean, uh, policy was not even given. IPOP had announced that it will no longer do sit at home every Monday. Yet there are individuals who continue to use that opportunity to attack people, destroy people's business uh, premises, and kill people. So it's easier to imagine to, 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 to uh, imagine. I mean, it's, it's easier. The, the, the consequences are very predictable if the Southeast is to be locked down for one whole month. So I agree that IPOP should be patient. There's still a long time between now and October the 21st. So let's see whether indeed Kano will not be brought to court. I do not see any reason why Kano should not be brought to court. 
The government that has deemed it fit to put him on trial should be ready to bring him to court every time that is needed in court. Provide the security. Even the most hardened of criminals in the world, they are brought to court. Absolutely. So I, 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 I hope that Khan will be brought to court on the 21st of October and I honestly um, will, will join Ohanese in, in pleading for understanding so that our people in the South East do not suffer indescribable pain. We have seen that even when governors assure people that nothing will happen that they should go about their lawful duties on Mondays. Such admonitions go unheeded because the people are not sure that if they go out, they won't be killed. So the people will rather refuse to listen to their governors who are telling them to come out on Mondays. Some people came out on, 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 on such days and they paid with their lives. Some lost their belongings, some lost their business premises. So you can understand why there is apprehension um, uh, at Ohanese that this, this um, one month uh, sit at home threat should not be carried out. All right. So I pump should, 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 should not carry out this kind of threat. Right. I, I, I do not see um, how the people can survive one whole month sitting inside their homes. I mean, our, our people in the Southeast are excellent business people. So how do they then survive if they don't go to work? If they don't sell their things? And that brings me to the I hope that we will get the final analysis and there will be no need for this because to even damage the credibility of IPOP, oh, it will damage the standing and the sympathy that IPOP has with uh, ordinary uh, Easterners. Mm. That brings us to the next um, question, BKO. Uh, is it not preemptive to, not, to then think that the DSS would not produce Nandi Kano in court, or do you think they are saying this against the backdrop of the DSS antecedents of not producing their defendants in court? Well, I think it's the DSS um, um, antecedent that is pushing them to think that that is what will happen. Um, um, at the next hearing of the, of, of the matter. Remember, it took the judge. DSS wanted to um, have, so we detained in, in this. Uh, to detain him for 90 days without bail. You can't, uh, you can't have him detained uh, for another 90 days. So they just wanted a kind of um, continuous detention of Shore, uh, indefinite detention of Shore, by constantly appealing to the court to give them 90 more days to do some investigation. I mean, why, why would you need uh, more than 180 days to investigate a matter that was in the open, clearly in the open? So the judge declined, and so Ure was granted bail, even though the bail conditions were tough, but so Ure was granted bail. That's the way, that's the way it should be. Respect the, the courts of our land. Respect the laws of our land. Don't take the law into your own hands. Right, um, Biko. Um, let, let me quickly go to our online um, comments, because this show is mainly about our audience. And the first question I'll be taking from our audience is from Fabian Akaize. He says, it's obvious that IPOB has some influential uh, political godfathers in the Southeast and Nigeria at large. Why have the security agencies not unveiled their sponsors in the country? I mean, it's, um, it's the same question that people ask about Boko Haram. Why haven't the sponsors of Boko Haram being exposed, even after the United Arab Emirates provided a solid lead. Mm -hmm. Now we want to try them, try them uh, in secret, and um, refuse to, to, to name these undesirable elements and uh, haters of our nation. So 
that is a, a question that I expect the Nigerian authorities to, to answer. I, if people are using hypo to cause mayhem in our country, and you are aware of who they are, why not, why not um, put some people in custody and put them on trial for their, for, for, for their despicable um, acts against their own country? So I, I can't understand why, why some people would not be named, shamed, and then put on trial. Right, okay, so uh, we'll go back to some of the influx of um, questions that we are having on the comment section. So keep your questions coming in. We'll definitely ask them uh, to uh, BQ and we'll definitely provide answers to them. Let's go to our second topic, which is the PDP calling for the resignation of the CBN governor. They are especially worried with the fact that when Mr. Godwin Mayfield took office as CBN governor in 2014, the Naira exchanged for 164 Naira to a dollar. But today, according to the words of the PDP, the Naira has tumbled to near 600 Naira to a dollar, putting the nation's economy on its knees. So, Bikhail, do you think that Godwin Emefile's resignation should be a no-brainer? I mean, I've, I have personally demanded on journalist anger for his resignation. I don't know what he's still doing there. If you are a CBN governor or, or anyone for that matter holding public office and you are not seen to be making any positive impact, what are you still doing? Because I expect the president to have what we call the key performance index. I expect him to be able to measure the effectiveness and uh, the solid performance of the people who work with him. If a CBN governor came into office at a time when the Naira was exchanging for 165 Naira uh, to a dollar, and we are seeing the, the, the Naira tumble to 575, at least sometime this week it was 575 to a dollar, then we need to ask questions. It means that his methods are not working. It means that the policies that he introduced are not working. And that rather than even slow down the, 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 the downward spiral of the, the, the Naira, the, the, the policies are worsening things. So the question is, does the Apex Bank have full autonomy? If it has full autonomy, if that is if if a Mefele will tell us that the Apex Bank has full autonomy, how has he used the autonomy of the CBN to give us monetary and fiscal policies that will work for our nation, that we can all be happy about? I mean, businesses are closing, the manufacturers are closing several lines of their, their businesses because of the paucity of foreign exchange. They can access foreign exchange at a good rate. We have said consistently that the gap between the unofficial rate and the official rate is too wide. When you have that gap as wide as it is now, you can only encourage round tripping and hoarding of forex by BDCs and other speculators. In the first place, you shouldn't even be selling forex to BDCs because if we do not sell to them, we will still be able to get by. But you sell to them and these BDCs, knowing that there's a huge gap between the official rate and the unofficial rate, which is the, 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 the black market rate, they would rather hurt the dollar so that they can make money by pushing it into the, uh, the black market. Absolutely. A lot of our people, including those based abroad, are keeping their dollars for the purpose of speculation. Hmm. So why can't the CPN government find a way to address the, the issue of a, of a falling uh, 
naira value. Right. If we continue to take money from the foreign reserves to try to show up the value of the naira to flood the, the forex market with, with, with dollars, we will be depleting the foreign reserves. Absolutely. Now that will be good for us in the final analysis. Let me jump in by chipping this um, question in so you, you answer alongside your thoughts. Anyway, the, the PDP youths have rather attacked Mr. Logmodino and Mr. Secondos to focus on their own internal party problems and leave the CDN okay, who they believe is doing a good job instead. How do you react to this? Is it, should, should it be a matter of politics? Is this something, the Naira issue, should it be something that we should play politics with or we should be serious as a government? The government has to be serious. You do not defend the indefensible. How do you tell us that the CBN governor is doing well when um, it is as apparent as daylight that he is failing? Is 575 naira to a dollar good for our country? The answer is no. It's not good for everyone. It's not good for everyone. A lot of the things that we consume are imported. The cars that we drive are imported. There's no way that this the, the decline in the value of the Naira will not impact on virtually everything. And that's why you see a lot of manufacturing concerns going under. The man they can't access forex. I know that in the final analysis, we must export a lot more. We must produce a lot more so that we can earn more foreign exchange. But the CBN has not done enough to even instill confidence in investors. And we need these investors to come into our country, invest in our country, bring in uh, substantial foreign exchange to invest in our country. If we check all of the uh, all of the indices, point to the fact that confidence in investing in Nigeria is being eroded. So you have a situation in which this second the second quarter of this year we recorded just a little more than eight hundred million dollars mm. by way of uh, foreign. Uh, I mean, uh, a direct investment into our country inflows by way of foreign direct investment, which is the lowest since the second quarter of 2016. That's the lowest. Mm -hmm. what, was, what was recorded by Nigeria in the second quarter of this year? It sends a very bad signal that even investors are not confident enough to come and invest in our country. Right. And the CBN has to end that confidence of investors. All right, so we, we see uh, what, what the CBN will be doing in the coming days remains to be seen. Let's move to our third topic and then we'll go to our live audiences who are, our, our live audience who are asking questions, um, begging for answers. Uh, let's talk about the anti-open grazing law which has led to a spat between Governor Akiri Delu and Governor Erufai. Do you know Governor said, Governor Erufai is struggling hard to export banditry to the south under an expressed opinion that is laced with mischief for condemning the law banning open grazing. What do you think is in the mind of the Cardinal Governor for holding this position? I think um, the Cardinal Governor is not really against open grazing. I read that interview completely. I was also wrong-footed by some of the um, captioning by Nigerian newspapers. It's not as if it's against open reason. I think his own argument is that, I mean, it's not as if he, he supports open reason, but his argument is that the governors should not have rushed to come up with, a, uh, with, uh, with a laws banning open reason. He would prefer that the thing was done 
on a gradual basis. Because don't forget in that interview, he also said that he, uh, his state had 14 um, uh, reserves, grazing reserves that he's trying to turn into a massive grazing area so that all the cattle areas, all the headsmen can then be localized in that big grazing reserve in the state. That is one way of saying, look, I do not support open grazing. I don't think any sensible person should support open grazing because open grazing has led to the deaths of many people. It has caused so much friction between farmers and herders. But in arguing that his colleagues down south were hasty in coming up with laws banning open grazing, he then made the statement that the laws that they were coming up with were not implementable. That is where the governor of Kaduna goofed. You cannot tell at this stage that the law banning open grazing, either in um, Ondo or Ekiti or Oshun, is not implementable. It is being implemented in Ondo states and successes are being recorded. It's in which headsmen in Osho State pledged that they will abide by the law, that they were going to do what the government wanted. People who are doing open grazing are being arrested by Amoteko in Ondo State, not less than 50 heads, uh, not less than three headsmen have been arrested and 55 cattle impounded. Right. So if you are a first offender and you match your cattle into farmlands, mm. you will be made to pay restitution for the damage you, uh, done on those, on those farms. But if you are a second offender, if you are not a first offender, then you go to three years jail. Some of those headsmen have said, look, we are not prepared to go to jail. We are prepared to pay for the damage that um, our cattle rot in people's farms. That is what is going on in Ondo now. A governor can sit in Kaduna far away and determine whether a law is implemented. I am saying that the law is being implemented in Ondo State and is already yielding dividends. The law is being implemented in Osho State and is already... All right, Biko, let, let me jump in if you can hear me. Yeah, I think you're back. Let me jump in. Uh, that makes me wonder, wonder why this open grazing law could turn two governors from the same party against each other. If you can hear me, BK, can you hear me? Maybe I should start again. I I'm wondering why this open grazing law yeah. could turn two governors from the same party against you know, each other, especially with the 2023 politics already in the mix. Do you think this law is a no, hammer that can split the mm. ruling party, especially between the North and the South? Don't forget, don't forget that he spoke in general terms. So he was referring to the Southern governors generally. He wasn't referring to Akre Dolu. But Akre Dolu, when the uh, chairman of uh, Southwest Governors Forum, decided to respond to him. And of course, Anambra too responded to him because the, the House of Assembly in Anambra just passed the bill. The um, Delta to responded to him that you cannot say this is imp uh, not implementable. You've got to wait uh, for us to see whether it was implementable or not. Mm. But even APC governors can, can disagree with one another. Don't forget, even within the APC, there are tendencies, different tendencies, and these tendencies don't uh, regularly agree with one another. I want to believe that in the contest for um, influence ahead of 2023, Governor Rufai and Governor Akredolu are not on the same page, and it shows. But the, the, the issue is you've got to respect your fellow governors. You shouldn't be hasty in dismissing 
the efforts that they have made to reduce the friction cost by constant um, um, uh, violence between farmers and headsmen on account of uh, encroaching on, 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 on farmlands um, by, by headsmen. Right, uh, BK, so let's um, get back to our online chats, online messages from our audience. Uh, this is coming from Olushala Julius. It says, Babajide, can't, can't the federal government sit down genuinely with these IPOP members and honestly address these agitations they have been hanging on federal government? Uh, Ohanese um, has announced that the Southeast Caucus of the National Assembly is um, working on a political solution um, that will see Canon being released um, based on um, some arrangement. I believe that if this is done, the tension in the area will come down. The violence that we are seeing, attack on uh, government installations, um, attack on um, police stations, attack on nine offices will we'll, we'll come to an end. Because the truth is, these kind of groups are not easy to exterminate and not easy to silence. So at the end of the day, a political solution may that will ensure that both sides make critical concessions may be the, the, the solution to the needless violence that we are experiencing. We've, we've used right. troops. They have, right. they, they, they have not achieved the results. We tried that in uh, the Niger Delta. We thought a military solution would bring an end to the destruction of pipelines and all that. It didn't achieve anything. And the VP and the then um, Minister of uh, Minister of State uh, Petroleum Resources had to go, go to the South South to negotiate with militants, and they allowed Nigeria uh, to continue to produce um, uh, crude oil at the level that uh, we wanted to produce. So it's not every time that force works. That's why I will encourage um, talking to these guys mm. if it will bring about genuine peace in the South East. Okay, let me quickly uh, chip in this um, question from Mike Akisomi. I think he's sending his message from outside of Nigeria. He said, uh, good evening, BKO and everybody. When will Nigeria government start delivering services to the people? Power is impossible. How about pipe bond water? Here in, the Euro here in Europe, it is the job of the local government. You might want to respond to that very briefly. Yes, um, that's why a lot of us are calling for restructuring. Um, power has to be devolved uh, to all the federating units. The federal government has too much on its plate. That's why they can't fix all our roads. States are now constrained to fix federal roads. Because the federal government has not got uh, the funds to fix. Uh, And of course, full autonomy to the local governments. You know, so if, if um, they have greater role to play as a shrine in the constitution, they will do a lot more. The only thing that we need is to have um, some form of check and balances so that the lowest tier government does not become. Um, ineffective uh, uh, after uh, being given autonomy. The next question is coming from Olushala Julius. He wants to find out why these two APC governors can't go into the inner room and discuss extensively and stop washing the dirty linen outside. <laughs> All right. Um, Sometimes it's just uh, 
on both sides, you can see impatience and lack of tolerance. You know, Arrow as I said earlier, shouldn't have criticized his colleagues, even if they were in rival parties. We accused governors of not doing enough to secure their states, of leaving everything to Mr. President. Now governors came up with the idea of banning open grazing. Governors came up with the idea of coming up with enabling laws to ban open grazing. And you are now criticizing them. Whereas in your own state, you also came up with some um, initiatives meant to check banditry. Nobody said at that time that those decisions that you have, have taken, those uh, were uh, not implementable. People wished you well. So it was wrong of Governor Rufai to have said that. And what he said was an act of provocation to say that they were politicizing things. I've not seen how this thing is being politicized. In any case, the whole idea of open grazing actually started from northern Nigeria. It was the governor of Bono State, as well as the governor of Taraba State, who first came up with the idea of banning open grazing. So to say that people are politicizing it, I mean, he has no proof. Of that. So when you make uh, uncharitable remarks about your colleagues, they are definitely going to respond in anger. But we expect them, being from the same party, although they may belong to different tendencies within their own party, we expect them at least to, to, to not hit up the quality by, by uh, making uh, uncharitable um, uh, remarks. Right. Uh, let's see, the, this might be the final question from our audience um, from the YouTube channel. Uh, John Sanko says, do you think IPOP members really like themselves or the Igbo tribe in the eastern region? Why 30 days sit at home? Well, I, perhaps it's just a threat to get the, the office of the Attorney General of the Federation and the DSS to do the right thing, which is to bring to court Unam Dikano. Because I do not see how you can keep people within the four walls of their homes for up to a month, especially in an area of our country where men and women are known for their uh, fast, fantastic capacity for business. When it comes to commerce, the Southeast rules our country. The people of the Southeast rule our country. So, I do not see how this can work. And I just want to believe that it was a threat meant to get the DSS to not refuse to bring Kano to court. I mean, if Kano is not um, extremely ill to the point that he cannot walk, why wouldn't you bring him to court? If the judge says you must bring him to court, then you must be responsible enough to bring him to court. Mm. Our nation is governed by laws. The DSS is a product of the law. So yeah, okay. it um, must obey the, the law I think before we call it a wrap, there is an important question, and I think the question is coming from the north. That's on the uh, this north south, uh, you know, spot on the issue of open grazing. Uh, Nasir Umar Hassan wants to find out. He says, "Why can't you say whether it's also proper?" for Governor Akiri Dulu to say Governor Erufai is trying hard to export banditry to the south. He's saying, why don't you say it is not proper for uh, Governor Akiri Dulu to have made that assertion? Yeah, now that he has asked that question, I will say that that was a very bad statement by the, by the governor from those state and clearly exaggerated. I said earlier that the governor of Kaduna State does not oppose
leaves that it is no longer um, um, does no, no longer make sense. So I said that earlier, that clearly newspapers caused this kind of uh, disagreement because of the way they captioned the story. Some of them reported that the, gov uh, the governor of Cardinal State mocked the South, South, uh, Southern governor. But what Erufai was saying was that they were hasty. And then Rufai said that they were being political. That is where he got them angry. On this matter, both Erufa and the Southern governors are on the same page, which is that let us have alternative means of livestock production beyond open grazing. They are on the same page on that. He explained that. But he got his colleagues angry by saying that um, they, what they were doing was not implementable, that their laws were not implementable. That was what got them angry. Everyone knows that the governor on those states gets angry even on some matters that he shouldn't be angry about. Mm. So by saying that the governor of was trying to export banditry right. to the south was very uncharitable. He shouldn't have said that. I agree with Nasir that that statement was wrong. He shouldn't have said that because exactly. there's no basis for that. The governor of Cardinal State has no plan to export banditry to any state. So it was wrong to have said that. But I will also blame the cardinal governor mm. for dismissing the efforts of his colleagues. If you have disagreement, at least you have to uh, state it mm. in a more subtle manner. But by Absolutely. saying that the laws that they came up with were, were not implementable, I think that was wrong. And they shouldn't have said that they were politicizing things. That was also wrong as well. So both Erufai and the governor Right. I want to believe you said uh, you're trying to say they're both wrong. Uh, that's uh, one thing we know. We expect uh, them to be more charitable in their remarks. Absolutely. That's one, one thing we know. Uh, but did call a deal to tell you that's what we know you are. You, you always analyze issues the way they are, lay them on the table, and allow the audience to extrapolate um, you know, their own conclusion from it. Uh, special thanks to you, Babajide Koladi, to tell you for those insightful analyses, as always. And thanks to you, to our audience, for joining our every edition. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, TVC News. Click on the subscribe button to get the latest information. Uh, and a very quick reminder, for the 61st Independence Day special edition on issues with GDA, you get a chance to ask the maestro, the maestro Baba Jide Koladio, to tell you any question of your choice, and it will feature virtually during the live show. How to do this? Record the 30 seconds video of yourself with a question you would like to ask VKO, then send the video via WhatsApp to 0706-382-2184. Again, 0706-382-2184. <laughs> you never know, your question might be the one to be picked by him. Thank you so much, Baba Jide Koladio to you once again. Really appreciate uh, your opinion, your, 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 your messages at this time. Absolutely. All right, that's it. I'm Ibrahim Shita. See you again next edition. Bye now.